Um, as a seller, if your home doesn't sell, firstly, don't panic, okay? Now, you need to know your suburb's typical number of days on the market, okay? So, for example, if your suburb you're in is... Um, typical sale days on market is 45, and you've been on the market a month, and you're starting to flap, well, calm down. Get to 60, and then start to get worried. H how are things going? I mean, are you getting lots of people to your opens and inspections, and just not getting any offers? Or are you getting lots of offers, and you won't agree to any of them, because you don't want market value, you want more? You've got to know what's going on. The, do you know, the, the biggest, the most scary thing for people that have trouble in selling their homes, and this is genuine, is um, when your house is in an area where there are lots of other similar types of property, and they are all selling and yours isn't. Okay, that's usually, that's usually actually when it gets harder for me as well, because that means that the market's still okay, that type of house is in demand, everything is stacking up to why your particular one isn't safe. So you need to be aware. And, and, and talk about the request from the agent, get the potential um, feedback from the, from the agents constantly. A lot of agents are very good at this, but remember that, back to our million dollar house, if you have been in contact with your agent talking almost daily, you know what the response has been from the adverts and from the online listings, and you've, been spe and you've found out after every inspection what people thought and, and how the agent feels it's going. If that was going on all the time, and you were hoping for 950 to a million, and then it failed at auction, and then a couple of weeks later you got an offer of 880, you wouldn't be quite so shocked, and you might just give it some consideration. Okay, you might stretch them and try and get them up to 910, 920, or whatever, or you could refuse it. It's, it's entirely up to you. But you would at least know why. If you've not spoken, and then you get the offer of 880, you're going to think the agent's having a laugh, and you won't know why, and you'll just flatly refuse it, yet it could have been the best chance you got to get top money. If things don't... Sell, now, oh, didn't I look young once? God, what's happened? Um, tell I've been doing it a long time now, can't you? Um, I was 19 there. I'm nearly 30 now. Um, that guy's an agent. Might be a time for a change. Now, remember, uh, agents are supposed to market your homes. Don't put up with the same advert type text photograph every issue. In the adverts, think about creativity. Maybe week one, you use that particular photograph, that wording. Week two, you use vary it. It's marketing, it's called being creative. Do you know a single car maker that keeps the same model exactly the same year after year? No, they don't. So it's the same thing, it's just very condensed. Vary your marketing campaign. Just think that as the sale process is going through, if you fail to sell, you can change agents. There's not, you can change agents. But it don't change agents if they're doing, doing everything right and you're just being a pain on the price. So, what offer, should, what offer should you take? Now, that do you accept the first offer? I don't know whether many of you have ever had that. Personally, I, I've never had it. I've been, I've been lucky. I mean, sometimes it, I've been selling in terrible markets personally and it's taken a, a fair time to sell. But I never got that really tempting first offer and got six months later thinking, oh gosh, if I'd only taken it. But I've had heaps of, heaps of times it's happened in, in, in work. And it really is a tricky thing. And this is why you really need to be conscious of the market that you're in. And I've had plenty of agents inspect the home. Your property supplements are sort of stacked up so you know every issue and what's in them. You know what's going on online. And the whole point is you will then know that if that first offer comes, we're back to our million dollar house, if that first offer comes in at 910 or 920 and you want a million, you know that possibly you could negotiate up, okay? That little one knows. You possibly could negotiate up. But if you're absolutely adamant you want your million, you haven't got a clue what's going on in the market, you'll just say, oh, for goodness sake, it's only been on the market a week, forget it. Okay, so it, that, that's, you've got to be really careful. You, refu you, know, you refuse an offer. Well, actually, it's even the lowest, this is what I told you I'm going on the other side now. Let's say you're a million dollar and you've had this ridiculously offer of 650. The temptation is to go and find out which car they own and slash the tires. But don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Because the whole point is you, you could come back and say, look, thank you very much for the offer. Tell the agent that's fine. And we like their terms because their terms may be good. But we are seeking in excess of 950. 
at least you haven't got rid of them. They might be playing a game. Now, they might go and try and do that at a few other houses, but they might actually like yours, and they could come back. So never refuse an offer. And don't take it personally. Think of them like a... When you're a seller, you've got to think like a buyer. Because the thing is, this is the other amazing thing, is that when people are selling their house, they want over market value. How many of you here have proudly paid over market value for their house? No, you wouldn't, would you? No. But you want the buyer to. So don't, if you thought like a buyer, you'd know that is just not going to happen. Learn to negotiate. Don't be in that forced sale situation. Okay? If you're going to get divorced, probably sell the house before you leave the business. Okay? It's much easier. Except the market can move up and, up and down in a, we discussed it earlier, but in a sh really, really short period of time. For example, a small suburb that's usually in high demand, market takes a bit of a slowdown, and suddenly, instead of there being three or four houses on for 750 to a million, there's suddenly eight or nine. Now, that will really hit the market, because suddenly supply has doubled, and buyers uh, demand may have shrunk a little bit. That suddenly means it's a buyer's market, not a seller's market. And that could, that could happen in, in weeks. And it won't be reported in the paper, it won't be on the news, because it'd be happening in your suburb without really anybody noticing. So when you've done all those things, you should have survived and thrived the housing market of today. And the rest, as it says up there, is down to you. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.